Hello students, so welcome back to my YouTube channel Dr. Physics by DYSP. That is my name Dr. Y. Shiva Prakash. So now after long time I am making one more video for you. So this is the video to discuss the Davison and Germer experiment. Okay. So this is basically an experiment to prove the exist existence of matter waves. Okay. I think you already know about what are matter waves. Okay. The matter waves are nothing but the waves associated with any matter particles like electron beam okay or any other particles which are moving with very high speed etc right so the experiment is basically to find the wavelength of the fast moving electrons so if the electrons are behaving like waves then what is the wavelength of such matter waves associated with electron beam okay now let us discuss this uh, very interesting experiment so before that actually i think you know another experiment to prove the existence of matter waves is jp thomson experiment right so in that experiment also we are able to find the wavelength of electron beam and this is another experiment to give more evidence for the existence of matter waves so that we can find the wavelength of electron beam and we can compare that wavelength with the uh, wavelength calculated by Bragg's law also so that we can uh, uh, conclude that the electron beam is behaving like a wave okay wave nature is also possible for electron beam so with that context okay the uh, scientist Davison and Germer so both of them designed a simple experiment which is uh, similar to your uh, spectrometer okay to find the wavelength of electron beam now look at the diagram here so what is the experimental parts so now here we have an electron gun so evacuated chamber it is actually evacuated completely evacuated electron chamber is electron gun chamber is there so inside that we have one circuit simple circuit you can see the see, uh, see here so low tension battery so connected to a filament okay the filament is basically a tungsten filament coated by some uh, zinc oxide okay so that uh, whenever there is a pass passage of current through the filament the filament get heated okay when the filament uh, become red hot the electrons get emitted by the filament right so any uh, hot uh, metallic uh, surface always emit the electrons okay so that is called thermal electrons also thermally emitted electrons are called thermal electrons now such thermally emitted electrons are uh, allowed to accelerate towards this another chamber okay so this is actually called uh, metallic cylinder so in which we have two pin holes h1 and h2 so these uh, pin holes, through that pin holes the electrons are made to accelerate how it is accelerated because this metallic cylinder is connected to positive terminal of the high tension battery you can see another battery here that is variable uh, battery high tension battery so you can consider its uh, voltages as v2 okay so v1 is the voltage supplied to just to heat the filament and v2 is the variable voltage heat uh, increasable okay or adjustable to any high voltages to accelerate the electron towards the metallic cylinder okay so h1 and h2 are the two small pin holes here so electron beam which are uh, emitted by the filament are allowed to enter through the pin holes okay when they are passing through the metallic cylinder okay depending upon the applied potential okay they, they will move with very high speed okay i mean the kinetic energy or its velocity increases depending upon the applied voltage v2 here in the high tension battery and such a high electron high uh, kinetic energy electrons are allowed to fall on a nickel crystal on the other side okay that means this incident electron beam is allowed to fall on the surface of nickel crystal okay so nickel crystal is used as a sample here for scattering of the electron beam so because it consisting of number of atoms in the uh, particular uh, fashion you know so it is basically crystal so systematic arrangement of atoms are expected in any crystal right and there are some crystal planes also as you know there are some crystal planes in any crystal so the crystal planes are acting as reflecting planes also for the incident beam so in case in case of uh, Bragg's law how the x-rays are diffracted by the crystal in the same fashion electron beam is also reflected back I mean uh, scattered or reflected from various crystal planes here right so you can you can uh, see in the next diagram here so this is a nickel crystal so it is cut uh, so, so such in such a way that so it is having number of crystal planes so these are the parallel crystal planes so you can consider them as 111 planes so Miller indices of the planes are 111 that means they are called 111 crystal planes okay so they are used here for reflection of the electron beam so in such a way that so the well polished surface of the 
nickel crystal is allowed to expose to the incident electron beam here right okay now the scattered electron beam so they are uh, traveling in the different different directions right so they are allowed to uh, fall through allowed to fall on a movable collector that means it is just uh, working like a detector here along with the scale you can see that so it is rotatable around the uh, nickel crystal okay so it is placed on the center crystal table so around the crystal table we can rotate the detector so that wherever it is possible we can collect the reflected beam of the electron through the detector okay so this detector is also called faraday's chamber so it detects the intensity of the electron beam basically it detects the intensity of electron beam so now at what particular angle we have the maximum intensity so that is what you actually, actually have to identify using the detector by moving from various places here so that means for various uh, scattered angle okay we are able to collect the uh, scattered electron beam by using this uh, mobile collector okay now this is the experimental arrangement for you so now in this experimental arrangement it is found that okay particularly uh, when the applied potential 54 volts okay electron beam is there the scattered i mean the reflected electron beam will have okay this, this is the scattered beam or reflected electron beam by a particular crystal plane will have the maximum intensity okay and the corresponding angle is, is called actually the glancing angle glancing angle is around 65 degree but the uh, scattering angle is not 65 degree scattering angle is around 50 degree here but corresponding glancing angle according to bragg's law is 65 degree so now for this particular position we can expect that the scattered beam will have maximum intensity okay so now let us see in terms of the variation of the uh, incident beam versus the variation of the applied potential so the experiment is done for various potentials like 36 volts 40 volts 44 volts 48 volts you know 54 volts particularly 60 64 68 okay like that the applied potential is increased here to increase the intensity of the electron beam incident electron beam and it is found that in the first case at 36 volts okay the uh, the incident beam is just plain without any hump okay and then at 40 volts a small hump is created in the uh, scattered beam next that hump is increasing okay the hump is gradually you know, produces and then it makes like a shape called spur okay a spur shape of maximum intensity electron is formed particularly at 54 volts at the scattering angle of 50 degree okay so at that scattering angle and that particular 54 volts so whatever the spur is formed here we considered that particular uh, scattered beam is equivalent to the maximum intensity x ray beam according to bragg's law in case of bragg's law x ray beam is used here for, is used in the uh, experiment for maximum intensity but in this case instead of x rays electron beam is considered so in that comparison we can calculate the wavelength okay now consider this particular case so where a maximum spur is formed at the scattering angle of 50 degree and that is equal into the glancing angle of 65 degree according to bragg's law is it clear so i just mentioned that points here so maximum intensity of the scattered electron beam is observed at scattering angle 50 degree at the potential applied potential v equal to 54 volts is it clear and that is what actually i have shown in the figure e okay in the form of a spur okay next you see according to bragg's law the glancing angle theta at the maximum spur at this particular maximum spur is equal to 65 degree okay that is what experimentally observed in davison germer experiment further they considered this particular case of the glancing angle 65 degree and calculated the wavelength using the bragg's law and then by considering the de broglie hypothesis you know de broglie hypothesis is nothing but what it is uh, the law or the hypothesis used to calculate the wavelength of the matter waves if the electron beam is behaving like a matter wave then you can calculate its wavelength according to de broglie hypothesis also okay so calculate both the wavelengths according to bragg's law and according to de broglie wavelength then if you are able to find the same value of the wavelength then it is confirming the existence of matter waves associated with the electron beam here okay now let us see that uh, part of calculation okay now look at the calculations here 
So, <coughs> now let us consider the uh, calculation according to Bragg's law. So, for nickel crystals you know that we are using the uh, Miller indices planes 1 1 1 okay, that means 1 1 1 planes in the nickel crystal. For that there is a interplanar spacing you know according to crystal structures. So, you can find out the interplanar spacing for the various crystal planes. So, that crystal plane planes uh, interplanar spacing is now d is equal to 0 0.91 angstrom unit for nickel crystal. Okay, Take this data and then for the first order diffraction according to Bragg's law it is possible to get the diffraction at various orders okay particularly for first order of diffraction you know that n is equal to 1 you can take that value and then for constructive interference what do you mean by constructive interference so where the maximum intensity is uh, emitted after diffraction you know so after constructive interference it is possible so that is what actually observed at the uh, glancing angle theta equal to 65 degree okay now consider these values according to Bragg's law equation n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. So, very well known equation according to Bragg's law that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. Now, so what is lambda then if n is equal to 1 just 2d sin theta. So, we have to calculate that wavelength right. So, now substitute the interplanar spacing d is equal to 0 0.91 into 10 to the power of minus 10 because it is angstrom unit okay. 10 to, power, 10 to the power of minus 10 you have to consider here. Then sin theta, theta glancing angle is 65 degree for electron beam it is observed that maximum intensity of the electron beam according to the detector okay it is detecting at 65 degree is the maximum intensity so substitute that value of 65 degree then you will get the value of lambda is equal to 1.65 angstrom unit so this is what the wavelength of the electron beam calculated according to Bragg's law now let us uh, verify the same wavelength whether uh, the wavelength is also possible according to the calculation of de Broglie's hypothesis Okay. So, de Broglie's hypothesis says that electron beam also behaves like a waves. Then if it is behaving like a wave, what is its wavelength? So, according to its uh, de Broglie's hypothesis, okay, lambda that is a de Broglie wavelength associated with the electron beam is given by h by m v in general, where m is the mass of the electron and v is the velocity of the electron. Okay. So, you can consider m into v as momentum also h by p. Okay. That is the well known equation H lambda by h by p is also called de Broglie wavelength. Now, <coughs> in this equation velocity of the electron, how to calculate velocity of the electron? So, electrons are moving with some kinetic energy, right? So, kinetic energy of the electrons can be considered as half m v square is equal to. So, its energy is given by the applied potential v, is not it? So, you have to consider the energy is equal to E into applied potential v. Okay? So, v is the applied potential. <coughs> now, what is the velocity then? equation velocity is equal to square root of so 2 E v by m. Okay, you can rearrange the equation for v square as E v by uh, E v by I mean 2 E v by m and v is equal to square root of that 2 E v by m. Okay, now, substitute this equation of velocity in equation 2, okay, then you will get the equation for lambda as h divided by m is here v means square root of 2 E v by m. In this case, v is the applied potential not the velocity. Okay. Now, simplify again. So, we will get the h by square root of 2 m e v is the equation for lambda according to de Broglie hypothesis. Now, substitute these values again mass of the electron and uh, charge of the electron h is the well known Planck's constant okay, that is 6.625 to the power minus 34 and divided by square root of 2 mass of the electron 9.1 10 to the power minus 31 mass of the electron into charge of the electron 1.6 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb is not it. So, applied potential V is equal to 54 because at this applied potential only we are getting the maximum intensity of the electron beam. Okay, here also we are considering the same case. So, at the 54 volts only we are getting the maximum glancing angle theta is equal to 65 degree. Right. So, at that particular case, so what is the wavelength? So, according to now de Broglie hypothesis it is found that almost 1.66 angstrom unit here. Okay. So, compare this wavelength 1.66 angstrom unit to this uh, de Broglie wavelength 1.65 angstrom unit almost same is not it. So, these observed wavelengths according to de Broglie and according to Bragg's law. So, Bragg's law particularly for waves okay. this is for uh, electron beam particularly related to particles is not it particle nature, but still both are behaving like a wave and hence you can conclude that electrons okay, electron beam is behaving like a wave that means matter wave. So, existence of matter waves are proved using this experiment here. Okay.
the conclusion is the electron wavelength therefore agrees well with the observed wavelength okay that is around 1.66 angstrom unit and as we can say therefore the division germer experiment directly verifies the de broglie hypothesis of matter waves is it clear so this uh, division germer experiment is uh, uh, experimental evidence for the uh, proof or the existence of matter waves so this is actually the experiment done on electron beam so like that there may be possibility to find the uh, other particles other particles also behave as matter waves okay so not only electron beam so we can consider other particles also behaving as the matter waves if they are accelerated or moving with very high speed okay is it clear thank you thank you for watching